This machine looks like a twisted sculpture from a sci-fi movie, but it just shook the entire energy industry. What's happening right now here, it's the cover of the Chrysler that's being built here that you see up top there. In a quiet German town, scientists have done the unthinkable, keeping superheated plasma stable for eight minutes straight. So it's a well-behaved plasma, and the difference to before is that we would have to sit and watch this for eight minutes. That's longer than any fusion reactor of its kind, and they're not even at full power yet. Achieved fusion ignition, and that is creating more energy from fusion reactions. While the world waited for France's massive ITER project, Germany quietly raced ahead with something different, a bizarre-looking machine called the Wendelstein 7X. It could bring us clean, limitless energy, no meltdowns, no carbon, just raw power. And now, the world is finally paying attention. This is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Wendelstein 7X. Tucked away in the small coastal town of Greifswald, Germany, sits a machine that could change everything. It's called the Wendelstein 7X, and it doesn't look like any reactor you've seen before. Shaped like a metallic pretzel from another dimension, this reactor isn't about splitting atoms, it's about fusing them. After nearly two decades of construction, this experimental device came to life. And in 2022, it stunned the scientific community by holding plasma for eight minutes. That's not just a record, it's a revolution. So we do want to find out if we've made a plasma. Most people expected breakthroughs from big projects like France's ITER. But while they were still building, Germany had already switched on a different kind of machine, a Stellarator. Where others saw complexity, German engineers saw potential. The W7X was their bet. An expensive, risky, high-precision gamble. And now, it's paying off. This isn't some flashy startup or overhyped lab demo. It's real, and it's running. And though the public barely noticed, those in the energy world certainly did. Because if this strange machine works, the energy game may never be the same. Fusion versus fission. Nuclear energy isn't new, but the kind we've used for decades, fission, comes with baggage. It splits atoms, generates power, but also leaves behind dangerous waste, long-lived, hard to store, risky if things go wrong. Think Chernobyl, think Fukushima. Fusion flips the script. Instead of splitting atoms, it fuses them, just like the sun. The result? Immense energy, no carbon emissions, no meltdown risk and the waste, minimal and short-lived. Fusion uses hydrogen isotopes, common, light, and found in water. When fused, they produce helium, a harmless gas. No toxic leftovers, no weapons-grade material. Safety is built into the physics. If something goes wrong, the reaction stops. It's like trying to keep a candle lit in a hurricane. One gust and it's gone. That's why fusion has been called the holy grail of energy. But for 60 years, progress was painfully slow. The joke? Fusion is always 30 years away. Until now. Germany's W7X isn't just chasing fusion, it's catching it. And unlike traditional reactors, it might just be the first design that's truly ready to deliver clean power, without the risks that haunted nuclear for decades. Global Fusion Race the race for fusion isn't a one-nation sprint. It's a global marathon filled with giants. The United States has the National Ignition Facility and Sparks. China boasts its East Tokamak. The UK runs JET and MAST. South Korea is busy with K-Star. And then there's ITER, a $20 billion behemoth rising in southern France. Each of these projects hopes to crack the code of fusion. Most follow the same blueprint a donut-shaped machine called a tokamak. It's the design everyone trusts. Safe, predictable, familiar. Then came Germany. Instead of following the herd, they built something else. Something stranger. Something harder. A stellarator. While tokamaks are symmetrical and easier to model, they have a flaw. They need an electric current running through the plasma to stay stable. That current is tricky. It wobbles. It fails. Stellarators skip the current, they twist their magnetic fields into complex shapes that can, in theory, hold plasma steady forever. But they're a nightmare to build. Most countries gave up. Too complicated. Too expensive. Too ambitious. Not Germany. 
They poured in the time, the money, the precision. And now, the Wendelstein 7X is proving that the underdog may have had the better plan all along. Stellarator Gamble Choosing the Stellarator wasn't just bold, it was risky. For decades, the world walked away from this design, too complex, too unpredictable, too expensive. But Germany leaned in. While others refined the tokamak, German physicists and engineers went deep into the math and deeper into the unknown. For a long time, scientists have believed nuclear fusion to be the greenest answer. They spent over a million hours designing the Wendelstein 7X, ran supercomputer simulations, tweaked magnetic fields into bizarre, beautiful forms, built machinery so precise it could make a watchmaker nervous. The cost? Over a billion dollars. The reward? A shot at the future. Most experts didn't believe it would work. Even fusion insiders called it a long shot. But Germany didn't care about the odds. They cared about the potential. And now that gamble is starting to pay off. The W7X isn't just working, it's excelling. It's running plasma more stably for longer durations than many tokamaks. And it's doing it without the constant current that tokamaks need. For the first time in decades, the fusion community is rethinking everything. Maybe the hard path was the right one. Germany bet on the complicated, on the twisted, on the strange. And suddenly, the world is realizing they might have been right. Engineering feat. Building the Wendelstein 7X wasn't just a scientific challenge. It was an engineering miracle. Imagine crafting a machine the size of a house, but with the precision of a Swiss watch. That's what German engineers faced. At the heart of the reactor are 50 superconducting coils. Each one has a unique twisted shape, impossible to bend into place. So they had to be cast, carved, and machined from scratch. Making mini stars inside reactors like this is one of the greatest technological challenges humanity has ever faced. The tolerance? Less than a millimeter. One wrong move and the magnetic field wouldn't hold. The plasma would escape. The fusion would fail. To prevent that, engineers built custom robots, specialized milling machines, and a one-of-a-kind assembly facility. Every piece was scanned, measured, rechecked. Then came the cryogenics. Fusion plasma reaches 20 million degrees. The magnets must stay at minus 270. That's colder than deep space. Just meters apart, the W7X handles a temperature difference greater than the gap between an ice cube and the sun. To make it possible, they built one of Europe's largest liquid helium systems, kilometers of piping flowing through a machine with no room for error. And when they flipped the switch, the magnetic field matched the model perfectly. A fraction of a percent off would have ruined it, but they nailed it. That's not luck, that's precision. That's German engineering at its peak. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Eight minute breakthrough. Most fusion experiments celebrate when they hold plasma for a few seconds. That's how fragile the process is. A flicker of instability and it all collapses. But in late 2022, something extraordinary happened. The Wendelstein 7X held plasma steady, not for seconds, but for eight minutes. That moment changed everything. Eight minutes of high-performance plasma. Temperatures are hitting 20 million degrees Celsius. Strong confinement, high density, and all without melting down. This wasn't just a new record. It was a message. Fusion no longer had to be a burst. It could be a sustained flame. And here's the kicker. The reactor wasn't even running at full power. It was using a temporary cooling system, a placeholder. The real system is still on the way. Once upgrades are complete, scientists expect longer runs. If we achieve everything to put all the elements together to make fusion happen, then we have an abundant, clean, CO2 neutral, climate neutral energy source. More heat, more control. The triple product, a fusion metric combining temperature, density and confinement time, was approaching the threshold needed for net energy. No other Stellarator had ever come close. With this run, Germany didn't just break a record. 
They broke a belief that fusion had to be short, unstable, and unscalable. Now, the world is watching. Because this wasn't a lucky shot, it was a preview. And the next chapter? It could be even hotter. Why it matters. Fusion has always been a dream. Clean power, no emissions, no disasters, just pure star-like energy. But for decades, it felt out of reach. The science was tricky. The machines were delicate. The costs were crushing. Then came this eight-minute plasma, and everything changed. This wasn't just a record. It was proof. Proof that the Stellarator, the oddball of fusion designs, could actually deliver. While Tokamak struggled with current-induced instabilities, the W7X stayed calm. No wobble, no crash. Just sustained heat. That's the holy grail. Steady-state fusion. Not bursts, not flashes, but energy you can count on. For power grids, for cities, for the future. And Germany's machine isn't theoretical. It's already running, already learning. It showed that complex doesn't mean impossible, that strange shapes can hold real power. And suddenly the fusion roadmap looks shorter, clearer. Because this machine didn't just trap plasma, it freed the industry from decades of doubt. Industry reaction. At first, the fusion world shrugged. Another experiment, another flashy headline. But then they saw the data and everything stopped. Skepticism turned to silence, then to awe. At international conferences, W7X became the hot topic. Scientists from top tokamak projects started asking questions, taking notes, even copying techniques. Dr. Elizabeth Sykes from Princeton put it plainly, we may need to rethink everything. For decades, stellarators were seen as too complex to matter. Now they might be the fastest route to real power. Japan ramped up its own stellarator work. China launched a new program inspired directly by W7X. American universities shifted resources, even the private sector took notice. Investors who once chased only tokamaks started writing checks for stellarator startups. Renaissance Fusion, a European company, landed $15 million to simplify and scale the tech. The shockwave spread fast. Fusion was no longer a one-track race. Germany had opened a new lane, and now the whole world was moving. Policy moves. Governments noticed too, and they didn't stay quiet. The European Union boosted its fusion budget by 15% with a fresh focus on stellarator research. But Germany went further. They announced $500 million in new funding, money aimed squarely at scaling W7X into something bigger, something useful, not just a lab machine, a power machine. The goal? A prototype reactor that could someday power cities. And while they fund the future, they're also rewriting the rules. Germany's Federal Office for Radiation Protection is drafting the world's first fusion-specific safety framework. Right now, no country has official laws for licensing fusion plants. Germany wants to change that fast. Because this isn't just science anymore, it's infrastructure. It's an industry. The shift is clear. Fusion is no longer a fantasy buried in research papers. It's a technology entering the real world. And Germany plans to lead not just in labs, but in legislation, development, and deployment. While others talk about someday, Germany is building the roadmap for now. Next steps. The Wendelstein 7X is impressive, but it's just the beginning. Engineers are already working on upgrades, new components, stronger magnets, better cooling. By 2027, they aim to sustain plasma for 30 minutes. That's not a record, it's a revolution. It edges toward continuous operation, the holy grail of fusion. But Germany isn't stopping there. Plans are underway for a new machine, tentatively named WX. It won't just experiment, it'll produce net energy. This next device will combine everything learned from W7X with next-gen materials and smarter systems. It's part reactor, part power plant prototype, and it will face real-world demands, energy output, efficiency, and durability. Challenges remain. Tritium fuel cycles must be proven. Heat extraction systems need refinement. Radiation-hardened materials must hold up but momentum is building. With every success, fusion feels less like science fiction and more like an engineering reality. 
And Germany isn't just along for the ride, they're in the driver's seat. The next few years could decide how and when fusion powers our world, and the countdown has already started. Global Dynamics Fusion has always been a race, but now it's also a collaboration. Germany's W7X breakthrough didn't just light a fire, it opened doors. Even rivals are now partners. Take ITER in France, the world's largest tokamak. It once stood apart, but now its scientists are borrowing plasma control methods developed in Germany. Because W7X proved something valuable, stability matters, and stellarators might hold that key. Even China, Germany's fiercest competitor, is cooperating. Dozens of Chinese scientists have trained at W7X. In return, Germany is consulting on China's new Stellarator program. This alliance has survived despite political tension. Because science, at its best, doesn't care about borders. In the US, Princeton's Quasar project is reviving Stellarator research. It combines Germany's plasma lessons with American superconductors, aiming for a more compact, high-powered machine. Fusion startups once fixated on tokamaks are pivoting. Type 1 energy in the US and Renaissance. Fusion in France are now building stellarators with commercial ambition. Japan has even proposed a global stellarator alliance, and Germany is on board. So yes, there's competition. But there's also unity, because in the race for clean, limitless energy, everyone wins when someone breaks through. And right now, Germany's leading the way. Final thoughts. This is more than a machine. It's a symbol, a turning point. Germany didn't just build a fusion reactor, they built belief in silence, away from headlines. While the world waited for Eider and Tokamaks, Germany went rogue, with something twisted, complex, and almost alien. And it worked. Eight minutes of stable plasma might not sound like much to the average person, but in the world of fusion, it's like breaking gravity. It shattered doubts, it rewrote expectations, it forced the world to look twice. Fusion has always felt like tomorrow's promise. Germany made today's breakthrough. This twisted stellarator isn't just holding plasma, it's holding momentum. Governments are shifting, investors are moving, scientists are collaborating across borders. What once looked like an obscure engineering experiment is now center stage in humanity's energy story. And if things go as planned, the Wendelstein 7X will be remembered not just as a prototype, but as the spark that lit a global transformation. In a world desperate for clean power, steady grids, and climate solutions, Germany didn't wait for permission. They just built it. And the rest of us? We're finally catching up. This isn't science fiction anymore. Germany's Wendelstein 7X has changed the game. Quietly, steadily, it brought fusion closer to reality. A future of clean, limitless energy no longer feels far away. It's taking shape now in steel, in plasma, in silence, and soon it could power the world.